comes back to this. It really, it's ultimately it's an addiction crisis, and we've been and we've been running incidentally our anti-addiction campaign from the very start. Uh, that's the biggest campaign we've ever had, honestly. So, and still ongoing, strong. Yeah, like you mean like little addictions, like oh no, man, well, yeah, I don't have the, my phone or oh well, my god. Well, no, the, the addiction are our was little stuff. Substance abuse addictions. No, I know, but the, in and regards then, to this subject that we're talking about. Right in now. regards to this, no, it's it's in regards to this, it's our ultimate to, overall addictions. It's our addiction to the our idea of value and currency, our addiction to scamming people with currency, our addiction to the political systems and political agendas that we have, our addiction to our our conditioning to be left or right or Democrat right. or Republican and, and just dude, wake up, man. The red hats like, and the, the blue hats, fuck baby. Are you talking about? You just get them to destroy and, and, each other, and nobody will pay attention to all no, this shady shit that's be, going on over because here. Because the other side is heavily promoting we work on changing the environment for the better. It's not real. You have to be against it. You have to be against it. You're seriously you're because gonna, you're on the other team. It's it's the classic. And you're gonna come other. up with these. You're gonna come up with these little. Uh, these little agendas of your own, such as suggesting that this is just children being used as propaganda for politics in order to try and shut down the argument, like the Staggerson dude said. That doesn't shut down the argument. Right. We still have the issue at hand. No matter who's using it to make commercials or to use some kind of propaganda, yeah, that sucks and it's shady and everything, but you, we still have the the first issue to deal with. But we I'm still not have seeing, environmental I'm not dangers. even seeing how it is shady. How is that shady? Like our children... Well, like I said, dude, you're using people's fear of imminent destruction so that you can become president. That seems well, kind of shady. Well, this is not... I'm saying this is not... This is not that. Somebody's not trying to become president here. This is talking about changing our outlook and our concern. And you our know, habits. a concern a with society. the environment. And changing how we behave in regards to our planet, how we treat our planet, thereby how we treat in in a effect by extension ourselves and our children and grandchildren and future generations. Yeah, and ultimately, it's going to be how we treat ourselves that affects how we treat our planet. Which how we treat our planet is a reflection of ourselves. Coming back to me having made note that you know we're smoking. That's a small, a small microcosmic yeah, a consideration, addiction. the For little sure. addiction we have that we can't give up even though we know it's hurting us. Everybody's got them. You know, that's, and then there's the macrocosmic view of how we're mistreating the entire and planet. And if, if people complain that we smoke cigarettes, I think that's super funny because we never, I don't think ever one time claimed to be omniscient, all-knowing, perfect people that are here to judge everyone. Yeah. I don't remember saying that. I mean, I guess it could have slipped out <laughs> like it normally does, but that's not a thing. That's not a real thing. Yeah, and what we're... I mean... Um, never mind, I'm, I'm going to... That's all right. Continue with the video. Let's see what... You don't need to tell me twice. Nuclear winter is not fun. So what we're discussing here is not how real or unreal climate change is, because I'm not going to do that, but rather how this entire movement is now characterized by the emotional manipulation of children and by extension, adults. Let me remind you that these are the same kids who are being absolutely terrified out of having their own children because they're scared that they will also grow up breathing sulfur. <sighs> these kids have eco-anxiety. It's not a joke, that is a literal term. It's basically where they're traumatized by the concept of climate change. That's right, eco-anxiety. I mean, I- All right, I'm kind of with her on this one. I have a teenage girl in my life whom I care about very much, and anxiety seems to be the biggest cop-out for almost every single uh, confrontation, conflict, or stressful situation in one's life. That if you just say, I have anxiety, then all of a sudden you're excused from anything that might be hard. And that 
freaks me the frack out because I feel like it's the whole generation <laughs> kind of. Right, and that's something actually that we need to address head on there is because, well... I don't know about that be, one, man. That's going to be precisely the cop-out that comes into play here with the kids. I mean, totally. but... I didn't know that, that was a thing. Let's say the kids, they have anxiety over the ecosystem. And, okay, and let's be very clear here before we start talking about anxiety again the trigger word let's you know let's use it is that anxiety in it in of itself is a normal human emotion feeling that happens when you have to do something that you don't like which would could also be defined as a challenge mm -hmm. so it's not a what's the word i'm think oh it's not a diagnosis for your special life that you don't ever have to do anything hard. And I think that's what it's kind of being used as. Like, if you could imagine a little, like, 14-year-old holding up a prescription paper, like, but look, I have an anxiety. I don't have to do any of that stuff, you know? I feel like that happens a lot with a lot of different things. And it seems more like a cop-out. But again, when you're talking about kids like that, you could say cop-out, but that I I wouldn't put the blame on the kids like when you you know they don't know that that they're using it as a cop out that's just how it came to be with the way that they you know grew up and the things that they see especially social media I think the social media has a really really big part to play with the the scourge of anxiety and depression especially amongst girls I think that has a huge role to play but I, I don't, when we're, we're going to talk about anxiety, I don't mean a special diagnosis that makes you different than everybody else. It actually makes you the same as everybody else because you couldn't point to one human that's never felt anxiety. Everybody has to do it. It's basically, it's like taking a shit, you know? Like if you want to be alive, you just, you're going to have to do it. Right, and I mean, basically this... This uh, anxiety having become a diagnosis is, for the most part, giving someone an excuse to fall back on anxiety as being like, I used to have anxiety attacks all the time. I used to have panic attacks all the time. This right. turned to be an advantage, honestly. But you had real panic attacks. Yeah. Yes. I, again, I hate talking, I hate talking about her when she's not here, but... The, the, the teenage girl with whom I'm concerned with that mostly is, you know, basically says, oh, I had a panic attack yesterday or whatever. And, you know, to, to these young kids, a panic attack basically means they got a little anxious. They got anxious and then, like, their heart started beating a little bit faster. Like, that's pretty much, that's pretty yeah, much and it. Yeah, that's, so that's exactly that's it. That's another thing that we need to clear up and define for people. I think that the... The problem here is that things aren't being defined clearly for people yeah, who are learning, you know? Kids Words go, matter. <laughs> the, the doctors want to push certain drugs, you know? The pharmaceutical corps want to push these certain drugs specifically designed to treat diagnoses such as anxiety attacks, panic disorders. And yeah. so when your kid goes in the doctor and says, my heart was beating fast, the doctor's going to say, first thing, you're having anxiety attacks. You're right. take this drug. And once you've got that diagnosis, it gives you the excuse to fall back and continue to use that as an ongoing, repeated excuse. For not not merely to jump, to drop out of little things. Not merely to drop out of, out of no, responsibility. No, to alter your experience. But to hey, continue that's exactly. having to continue utilizing this it's a repeated like if you were told you're having anxiety attacks here you need to deal with them and clear them up that's not what's happening <laughs> no what that's you get to hold on to this is an, you hold on to that diagnosis yes. and that's an excuse for it, you it to can't just ever go blow away. off everything right. else and it this can't is, it's ever go away it's so, very important to note yeah. that we are in fact doing this that we are pushing the fucking diagnosis there's a reason for that it's not it it's a symptom it's trend, not the yeah. diagnosis is a symptom of the condition it's not the condition itself 
this is reflective of our considerations of what you, is valuable, which is pushing these drugs, yeah. pushing these profit motives. It's an unintended consequence, you know. But you said that it's not to cop out of responsibility, and I think we've said it many, many times before that responsibility plays a huge role in a lot of the problems that we have concerning, you know, devastating issues and everything we've talked about so far in every video. <laughs> like, responsibility is central to all of those things, and that's the trend I see mostly with this, you know, with this using your anxiety to hold on to, and it can never go away, and you can never, you know, fix it or overcome it. And so I don't have to be responsible for anything because, I look, I'm a victim. I'm disabled, you know. I'm, mm -hmm. like, handicapped by this thing. And so I don't have to do any of the hard things uh, that yeah, uh, my peers are doing. And adults do it, too. Oh, adults do it, too, absolutely, big time. But it's, it's, it's weird to me because if you had something and you're that devastated about it, like, wouldn't you want to hopefully treat it and one day completely completely be rid of this infliction that is a disease upon you, you know, like, and that's not what, that's not what it's for. It's, it's so that you can avert little responsibilities, right. responsibility for yourself and your behavior and your feelings and your thoughts. If you're not responsible for that shit, then who the fuck is? <laughs> like, I'd like to make it. a note here as regards something that I had posted in the initiative page regarding responsibility uh, for uh, Brooklyn one of our new admins on the faculty, awesome girl, Brooklyn, you're awesome, you're, you're doing a great job. But um, they, they said, you know, in like the Spider-Man movie, they introduced this phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, I think that's giving us an insight into what's happening here, where we're pushing this division, or this, uh, not division, but um, what was the word, uh, victimization complex, mm -hmm. and this, this, diagnosis complex with with the especially with anxiety disorders and terminal de terminal depression and shit like that which it does terminal? become Doesn't it, it mean does become that terminal de yeah but i'm saying it kills you no well i'm i could mean that it's just um un incurable but um <sighs> wow incurable depression which does become terminal depression if pushed on people the way that it has been and especially in combination with the psych meds yeah, that high people suicide get and right. like mass shootings and shit so we're looking look at that with great power comes great responsibility now apply the soul mechanics uh theme here the soul mechanics philosophy and look at it backwards with great responsibility. S responsibility comes with power, power attached. Yeah. If you forfeit responsibility, what do you forfeit? And who might Everything. want you to do that? And for what reason? Everything. If you forfeit your responsibility over yourself, like, again, like I, like I said many times, you know, there are things that you just can't control, but you can control yourself. And this is a lesson that I, I keep trying to push upon, you know, my you know, kids that are in my life and, and younger people that, you know, you, you can you can sit and freak out and cry about stuff that other people did. It's all fine and good. You're, you can express your feelings no matter what, but to let it take you over like that and it's the end of your life and it's the worst thing that could ever happen and, you know, the smallest little, you know, conflict or whatever. In those times when those emotions are coming out and you feel more desperate and hurt, then you can focus on things that you can control, which is basically yourself, everything about yourself. You can control how you behave and react and act, and, you know, it's it that makes all the difference. You might as well make yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't... I don't see why these younger kids, they think it's impossible. They think they don't have control over their own feelings and, and, and thoughts. And you know what? There might be times, there could be times when people don't have full control over their own thoughts. That makes sense. It's happened to me. It happens to everybody. I, I believe, but I don't think it's a thing that's just forever. Your thoughts aren't you. Your thoughts are just things 
that go through, you know, you, they go through and then they go out. Like it doesn't, that doesn't mean that's who you are. A thought or a series of thoughts doesn't just become your entire person. Like you can still act and behave in any way you want, no matter what thoughts are coming in and out. And yeah, it could be extreme, like in the case of, you know, like serial killers. Well, I, I don't know, was, but... I think it was Descartes you said, I think, therefore I am, which implies that you are your thought. No, 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 no. Thought it implies, results from what you are. Yeah, it implies that you exist because yeah. you can think. Well, this is, I'm saying, if we get in, especially if we get into it with the atheists and that their speakings on the treatises of philosophy... Uh, that would be an easy spot implication here, and and it is an implication that can be put into play there that could easily be taken advantage of. I think they're the part which means that you are your thoughts. Your thoughts no, result I don't from that. You. you. Your thoughts are a result of what you are. They're produced by you. They do not define you. They're right. Not it's a product of, you know, it's like when you take a, you know, take a piss or whatever, like your, your piss came from you. It was exactly, made by you. Like, exactly. Like taking it was made by you. It's, you know, it's all of your own stuff and you leave it behind. <laughs> it's just a product of something that you made, you know, so it doesn't define you. It doesn't make you anything. You make you whatever you want to be. And I know a lot of factors go into that, and we're kind of simplifying it a little bit, but, you know, speaking generally about younger kids and, like, teenagers and stuff, I think that's a really important lesson that comes, it should come a little bit earlier than when you're already almost done with high school, you know what I mean? Like, those things should... Should yes, come I know. And that's, lower on the ladder. That's actually kind of a special circumstance there, wherein, you know... For, for example, our niece is, is uh, almost nearly finished with high school, and she hasn't experienced a great deal of the things that it's we would like for her complex. to have. It's a fear complex. The big fear is a big ruling part of every day, every moment yeah. of her life. And, and it's not even like, well, when we were kids, if we were afraid of shit, our parents would likely have said, stop being a coward and, put, you know, push this into it. Nowadays, it's like, well, if you're afraid of it, then we'll try and make it go away. Yeah, we'll put the bubble like, around so that you never have to concern yourself with it or see real. it. Or, you don't have you to know. hit your kid and call him a coward, but you really don't want to eliminate everything. That This is how we build our psychological right. immunities. Failure this is... is how we Pride develop proper coping mechanisms. Right. That's what it is, exactly. There's no coping mechanisms whatsoever. The coping no. with, again, with negativity out there in your environment, it's, you know, if you, wanna, you eat it up and then you become the negativity and then it goes inside of you and yeah. it comes out of you like your piss is you just wanna, all negativity. You want to get into conspiracy theory you want to talk about environmental climate change environmental activists and then say that there's conspiracies in play who would want you to forfeit your power via your responsibility who would want you to give in to your fears who would want you to not have proper coping mechanisms not have control Someone over yourself that was trying to control you like this is it's and it's an easy spot trick. It's a fucking oh yeah, you see it all the time in like religion, organized religions for sure. Yeah, it's so easy to control masses of people. But now it's the I think it's made even easier with social media and the internet. Like when we saw that weird TED Talk thing earlier about all these girls that you know teenagers and little girls that go online posting pictures of themselves are you am i ugly or am i pretty i didn't know that was a thing is that a real thing that seems really a weird behavior to put yourself on social media and say hey everybody tell me if i'm pretty or if i'm ugly yeah like right like that's very you, very weird why I've don't never... you look in a mirror and decide if you think that you're pretty or if you believe that you're why pretty don't or you if you're decide not. you know like, you can decide either way, but you what is, what is other people telling you? Like, oh yeah, I know you're ugly as fuck. Is that gonna help? <laughs> that's gonna help you feel better because that's what you're doing. You're opening the door for trolls to come out, and you know one of the comments the the TED Talk lady put up on her screen was like, "Go kill yourself." Oh, you're so ugly, yeah. and it was like, 
Why why would you invite that kind of thing in? Like, and, and on top of it, I you know, I know it's kind happen. of a stupid question to ask here in this regard, but you know, considering but why would you ever why would anybody ever say something like that? Why would you ever do that? Like why do we have people that are doing this? Why is this weird sort of behavior, behavior allowed? Why is it's very it very weird behavior? So could you liken that to like uh I don't know, maybe like back in the nineties? That the behavior of putting, you know, your video or your picture online and saying, hey, everybody, am I ugly or am I pretty? Could you liken that behavior to maybe, like, a girl in school in the 90s that just, like, slept with everyone? Like, is that a similar, can we make a comparison here? Yeah. Because it might not be wholly, the behavior in and of itself might not be wholly unpredictable or crazy if it's just kind of being translated through a different medium called, you know, the internet or social media. Or it's whatever. the same kind of thing yeah. for sure. But really, I mean, it's going to be, yeah, seeking validation, seeking. Yeah. Okay. So now that I think about it like that, I guess it's not that weird of behavior. It's just, it's on a different medium. And so it, it seems weird because we've never seen anything like that before. But again, speaking to, our actual environmental crisis it's this state state of removal this state of detachment and yes that originates with religious culture religion introduced this idea of you being separate from yourself being separate from your soul being separated from god divided from reality gosh and even now, like original sin yeah and now we have these this i you could say it's a it's a I'm, I'm not sure what to call it. It's Again, it's a division complex, really. That's all it is. is you say it's even into the stage of being an isolation complex where we have kids using these political terms and these gender identity identifications and expressions and all that to further remove themselves from their own reality, to remove themselves from who they are, to build these these robotic shells of themselves as, as a, you know, as, as a shield. Avatar. Yeah, as their avatar that it is not representative of who and what they really are to any extent by any measure but <clears throat> they they just continue to build these these furthering measures these these maybe everybody does it to a certain further extent removing themselves. everybody does do it's it just to maybe certain, it's to more shocking extent. and kind of sad to see when like kids do it but this being screened out of reality that was the initial cue we got that was the the initial warning we got was people once this internet kicks on people are going to start this is long before the internet came to be it, it wasn't even really a twinkling in whomever's eye at the time the internet was a far-fetched dream when we got this warning but the warning stated that once the computers take off and we get this internet culture, the, I, as I said, it wasn't known as that, but it was called in advance. It was told us this is going to happen. People are going to start to get screened out of reality, and that's what begins it all, and that's what's feeding it all. That's what's fueling it all. Now, I don't want to say that there's something wrong with the internet, something wrong with social media, that it's something that we should toss because it's a very useful tool. It's a very awesome tool, but at the same time, misappropriating this technology is it, it's it's exacerbating this this isolation complex this removal complex this division complex yeah, I would say so for sure and and it's it's just I I would say it's putting the value in the play that we are divided isolated individuals which is so funny because the facade of it is bringing us together. It's supposed to be bringing us together. It's supposed yeah, to be Yeah, it's uniting. intended purposes, but like I said, unintended consequences are come along with any any new thing. You know, you can't really know what ripple effect that something will have. Which I promise that we clear up the what I said about the um about my stance on population control. Cheeks, what is your stance on population control this as a measure? crazy. You are nuts, dude. You can't be going around saying <laughs> that we should control the population. That's crazy. I, I don't, I don't think, obviously, all right. Here's my, my point of view on the subject. That I, I don't necessarily think that there is a overpopulation problem. I'm sorry, I suppose in some par parts of the world you could say that maybe 
overpopulation as a problem, but I think that <clears throat> since we're talking about environmental shit anyways, I think that if we were to adapt the way that we go about using resources and make it more efficient, then the population it would have no difference. There would be no, it wouldn't matter. There would be no consequences from having, you know, millions and more people if well, we were going well, about well, it the smart way. The so the primary reason that ocean <coughs> acidification is happening is because of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, if, if we use our resources in a more smart way and make it more efficient so that we're putting less shit out. But that's us. That's us breathing. More people breathing. That's what's going to be the, the initial All right, so then you adapt. More trees. Whatever the fuck it is, uh, it, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Reflect the, the, sun's, <laughs> the sun's rays with freaking, you know, whatever tinfoil mirror satellites. I don't know. I'm just saying, we have the ability and the technology to solve these problems individually, which would collectively make everything a little bit better. But since we don't do that because some rich guy doesn't make more money off of it or wherever, then it's just continue going to continue to be a problem. But I think, yeah, I mean, if if we adapt like we're supposed to and do things in a more efficient and smart way, then I don't think the population would matter at all. But we don't do that. So it, it does matter. So technically it's not really an overpopulation problem. It's a problem with our industry. No, well we don't necessarily have an overpopulation problem as yet, although that could be argued, that could be arguable uh, yeah, to a certain I extent. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like I but, said, in some points, parts of the world, like there's obviously way too many people in certain areas but again, we adapt, we spread out, it's not such a big deal. Like, I, I think there are ways to go around fixing this problem, but you can't start regulating who can have kids and who no, can't. No, you can't. And that's why I'm saying some measure of population control, we don't know what it is. I however. know what we could do for population control. Educate young kids about sex education and give them contraceptives. Oh my god, yeah, it's fucking uh, genius! They would have less kids and less abortions and everything! That's something <gasps> we're already allowed to do, by the way. Blew my mind right now, because why would you do that? <laughs> that, would, that would be a start, I guess. That would be a start, is actually, actually tell kids who are trying to, you know, who we want to learn things and become more educated. Actually tell them the truth about stuff, and help them to be more, I don't know, productive and smart and, and... Right. But, I mean, see, the problem with that, though, is that there are a lot of kids who are going to get very anxious being confronted with sexual issues. So, by that logic, if they're too anxious to get a sex education class, then they're going to be way too anxious to have sex in the first place. So, we're good. Right. No, <laughs> no but problem. No, as it, with the, no with issue. With the overpopulation thing and the population control measure, I don't know what the answer would be there. Although, I do know that there's a few things that come into play that I should like to raise just to note. I'm not going to say, as I've already stated, personally, I am pro some measure of population control. I think it's the right way to go because, no, I do not think that at the rate we are expanding that we will be able to sustain the population that we do not have. Not be able to as or a, not be willing to? Well, no, I mean, with the, honestly, with the, yeah, we could, we could easily manage, we could produce enough to take care of everybody for sure. We can do that. We already have enough to take care of everybody. We just have people hoarding it and scamming each other out of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's all fixable issues. But where it comes to the, the carbon dioxide and the, that, how that's affecting the oceans, that's something we want to take into consideration long term. We can invent, like, crazy electrical trees that take carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen. But I'm pretty sure and put it's them all still over the place. Like I dumb. feel like it we have the technology like to f it, to feel to to I fix these problems. I think it's still problems. going to dump into the oceans, regardless of how much carbon dioxide we pr produce. I don't know about that for sure. And honestly, that would be the the you know hangers on for me either way. The 
the hinge for me either way on, in that regard. But I do think that we need to, whatever the case, we need to deal with overpopulation. If it means population control, then whatever, but it could very well mean taking care of our resources appropriately, distributing resources appropriately. Of course, that would, again, you know, on one hand, it's going to threaten democracy. It's on socialism! Hand, it's going to promote socialism. <laughs> oh, no! Or communism. Right. Trigger and, word! And I think a, that's, that's three an, in one video. Yeah, we got lots of trigger an, words. That's an easy Love out it. excuse to blow it off and, yep. and say that it it's It's wrong. evil right. and, it, yeah. But. Commie bastard. There's a few things that come into play that I'd like to raise. One is the go forth and multiply shit raised by religion that that mm. presents that as our prime directive now that that's obviously, your only purpose that that's, speaks yeah. to our biological imperative mm -hmm. it's simple value it's that's why it's there again it's it's a value placed in the system that plays well, off of the values already inherent in the system but it's it's no longer our imperative we do not have to be fucking like rabbits anymore we do not need to be actively procreating for the sake of it anymore we're past that phase yeah of our i feel like survival like a survival instinct and then like a reproduction is those are two kind of separate things i guess right sort of that, like not, oh not really. no because like personal survival and the survival of the species as a whole yeah they're they're linked insofar yeah. as regards the neurology of it that makes but, sense but yes, they are two separate issues to be dealing with here. We have survival as regards our our resources. Like anti-aging stuff, too? We have survival as regards the species and procreation, which is no longer a necessity. It's not something that we should be focused on. It's certainly not something that we should be focused on. People should not be out there fucking like jackrabbits thinking they need to pump out as many babies as they can. Certainly shouldn't have people pumping out babies for the sake of getting some kind of a welfare check or what have you. We have children that need to be adopted. We have issues to deal with mm -hmm. regarding the population all over the place that can be dealt with appropriately in, in different ways than we are. But Lots of different ways. Then there's also the, the Georgia Guidestones thing, where they uh, presented that thing, yes. where they said that the population should be reduced to a certain amount. What was it? Five... I don't know what it was, but the point of what uh, I'm trying to make remember. is that it was like 55 million. Or that's something one of the like points that. where people are going to say this is a fucking conspiracy theory, and there's dude, evil. Dude, the Georgia Guidestones are weird, though. There, there's evil, evil secret societies seeking to wipe us all out. Well, no, they you just, don't know. <laughs> they just kind of said that maybe it'd be a good idea to keep the population. Okay, right who's they though? Number. Who put these Whomever Georgia the Guidestones there. up? But that's just what I'm saying is. How do we know mystery. that they aren't right? Like, how do we know that they didn't know that that's a good number to keep under? Ooh, time travelers? You know. Maybe? Whoever yeah. built, whoever built the Georgia name. Guidestones are time travelers. time travelers. What? But Marty McFly comes back and he's like, put up this monument. How do we know that that isn't the right idea to have? And we've just been fucking brainwashed into thinking that that's evil. Some one world government trying to wipe us all out. No. That's not what it says at Maintaining all. the population under 500 million. Maintaining the population under 500 million. Does it say?